Hey there, here's Jan from Jovo and today I'm going to show you how to change your Alexa skills invocation name based on the stage it is currently in. Uh, this is the second part of our series on uh, staging with the Jovo framework and last time I showed you how to simply set up uh, different stages in your app.json file. Uh, so to recap, let's take a look at the, at the app.json. So uh, last time we created a, a beginner's project uh, with a just an Alexa skill and two stages. So we set a, up a local stage and the dev stage. And they currently both have the same endpoint. So they both use the Joe webhook URL uh, for local development. Uh, but they're both deployed to different uh, developer environments. So we have the local stage, which is just deployed to my default um, Ask CLI profile, uh, which is my personal account. And then we have the dev environment, which uh, gets deployed to uh, the Jovo dev um, account or the Jovo dev profile in my Ask CLI. And it uses a different skill ID, different, uh, different uh, developer um, portal. So that is deployed to two different, uh, to two different accounts. And our default stage is local, which we set up here uh, in this element. And so the thing is still, um, when you have uh, different skills, um, maybe even in the same account, it gets uh, quite uh, difficult sometimes to figure out which version of the skill you're currently talking to. And this is why uh, sometimes people add different invocation names uh, for the different stages. So for example, in my personal account, I could uh, change the skill invocation name to my test app local. So whenever I say like, um, open my test app local, I know that I'm talking to, to this specific uh, Alexa skill in this specific stage. And the thing is, if I change that here and then uh, do a build and deploy again with the Jova CLI, it would get overridden and so on. So it's quite tedious to keep that up to date. And this is why um, we added a new feature to the Jova CLI and to the Jova staging. Uh, that allows you to override your interaction model um, and to have different interaction models and invocation names for different stages. So let's set that up. It's uh, quite easy. So you can actually just um, use that here. You have the language model element and then specify which locale is used and then you add, can add certain elements to override or to add. And so let's, let's just copy that here and add that to, uh, to the local stage. So we can just add it below the endpoint. Um, um, and yes, and let, we'll let, let's just change that to local. And if we take a look at the Jovo models folder here, um, currently the invocation is, um, as you saw before, uh, my test app. And so now, um, if I now do a Jovo build, it will override this. So it won't override it in the models folder. It will override it in the platform specific folder. So if I take a look at these folders here, I have a platforms folder. It is created with a Jovo build. So I have a platforms folder, an Alexa skill folder, and then in the models here, I have the enus.json, which is still the Alexa specific interaction model. And currently it has the invocation name, my test app. So let's, uh, let's try it out. If I now do Jovo build stage local, it will update that. So if I take a look again, um, here it's now called my test app local. So this Jovo build just updates the platform specific uh, files and I need to do Jovo deploy again to use these files and then upload them to the Alexa skill developer console. And so let's just do Jovo deploy stage local. So, um, and it's now uploading it um, by using my ask profile, uh, my default ask profile and um, uploading it to my, to my skill. And so notice how I uh, used the stage option here, uh, the local option. Uh, we actually don't need to need to use that um, because uh, as you can see here in app.json, we, we specify the default stage. So the CLI will just use, use the default stage if we don't use anything else in the CLI. Um, but just to, to show you how it works, I, I used that. And so now it's building the interaction model, but we can already take a look um, here uh, and refresh. Oh, wait. Yeah, of course, it wasn't saved. Um, so let's just reload that. 
and it was already deployed. So here you can see that my test app local is, um, is updated and, and that's it. This is how we can override certain elements, but we can also add additional elements. So maybe for local development and even for testing and anything that's not in production, uh, we would want to use certain intents to, just to make testing easier. Let's take a look again at, in our models folder. Um, basically anything here, any, any path here can be added uh, to our app.json. So we could add an intent as well. Let's try it out. Uh, let's go to app.json again and add an intent. For example, uh, how about a delete everything intent? So uh, maybe when, I, when I'm showing it to people uh, and I have different, um, different user flows for new users and returning users, I might want to, without having to manually um, update the database, I might want to show people that I'm uh, the path of a new user. So like, we could add a delete everything intent and just with a phrase delete everything. And so and, but we don't want this to, to go into the production skill. And so this is why we will just add that uh, to certain stages. So let's try it out. And while doing this, so we now again to deploy it to the, um, to the uh, Alexa skill, um, we need to build and deploy with the Jova CLI again. Um, but um, showing you another shortcut here. So we, we can actually do Jova build. So we don't need to specify the stage here. Um, because default stage is local and we can add deploy here as well so it does um, both steps in one and we don't have to do uh, things step by step so let's let's just wait for a bit until it's uh, until it's built but we can already take a look at the developer console refresh and here it is so here is uh, the delete everything intent and it worked so this is um, how you can uh, how you can add different intents, how you can override invocation names by just adding elements to the app.json for specific stages. I hope you find this helpful. Uh, in the next tutorial, I will show you how to deploy your dev stage um, to a Lambda environment and use DynamoDB as well um, instead of the uh, the Jovo FileDB um, that is used for local development. See you next time.